Telescoping hive covers. Going to do something different. Normally cover with aluminum. We're going to use FRP. Talk about it coming up. I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. And what I'm doing today is I'm covering a couple of uh, telescoping hive covers. Uh, which for those of you that use those on your hives, I know some people like the migratory covers. I'm what they consider a hobbyist. I don't have a vast number of hives, so I use telescoping covers. Um, added some more hives this year, and I'm going to add some more in the spring. So I'm going to make some more covers here while we have this period of rainy weather. But instead of the conventional aluminum that uh, most people use, uh, I'm going to use what's called FRP. What's FRP? It's fiberglass reinforced plastic. It has some scraps of this, and some may think that's not UV resistant, but believe me, it is. Uh, I've had this on some outdoor applications uh, with our greenhouses and that for years, and I've had no breakdown with it. Uh, it works just fine. Had some scraps. I thought I'd give it a try here. You may have seen in, uh, if you looked at my previous video of making a telescopic cover, telescoping cover rather, that I use EPDM rubber. Uh, which is a commercial roofing product, and it has worked very, very well. I've had no problems with it whatsoever. Uh, probably be covering some more with that as well, because I still have some EPDM left. But to uh, adhere this to the uh, cover, I'm going to be using contact cement. Uh, if you've ever done countertop laminate before, it's exactly the same procedure. And I'll kind of walk you through it here. Okay, the way contact cement works, and this is the uh, stuff right here. I'm not using the water base, I'm using uh, what I call the good stuff. This is extremely flammable. You want to make sure you have very, very good ventilation because this gives off a lot of fumes. Uh, even though it's raining today, I've got uh, a couple of the bay doors open over there and a fan running so that I won't get happy, as they say, from the fumes. So what you do with this is you apply a coat to your base and your material and you let that dry till it tacks. Then you uh, ap apply it, your finished material on top, but you have to be absolutely positive it's where you want it to be because once it sticks, you won't get it off again. And I'll show you a couple little tricks I have for doing that. But the uh, first thing to do is apply a good coat of this. I should have got a smaller brush. And we'll just pour a little here and spread it around. If you're doing uh, large surfaces like a countertop, then I use a, uh, a foam roller. But you want to make sure you get a good even coat everywhere, don't miss any spots. I'll be doing the sides as well, but uh, we're going to do the top first and then I'll come back and do the sides. You have to work fairly quickly with this because it will uh, start to set. And then if you try to go back and brush like I'm doing here, you'll end up with getting little strings all over. Fortunately, it's cool today, so I don't have to worry about it setting up too fast. Then I'll do the same thing to the uh, top piece. Since I got a little carried away with how much I was pouring on this, I guess I'll do my sides too. Okay, there with everything coated, we just let it dry. It takes anywhere from 15 minutes to half an hour. You don't, you want it to be tacky, but you don't want it wet anywhere. So we'll just let that set and dry and come back once it's set up. Okay, once this is set up, you can, it's tacky, but not sticky. It won't stick to your hands. Uh, to keep the uh, other piece from bonding before you want it to, you can use dowels or I'm using uh, bamboo stakes, something we use in our greenhouses. 
Just put a little row of them on there. As you take your sheet, you definitely want to make sure you get it started square and straight. As you proceed down the line pressing, start taking the stakes out. Probably have more sticks in here than I needed. Just like that. <clears throat> Side pieces are similar operation, although I'm not going to use uh, sticks for these because they're short. And yes, that's taller than the top, but I'll use a laminate trimmer to cut that off. These were just some cut off scraps, so I'm kind of working with what I got here. And it looks something like this till I put the laminate trimmer to it and trim off this wild edge here. And there we have it, an FRP covered telescoping hive cover. Uh, if you enjoyed this, I appreciate getting a thumbs up. And of course, we're always looking for subscribers. And next to that subscribe button is a little bell. If you click that little bell, you'll be notified when we post another video. Otherwise, I'm Roger in the shop, and we'll see you on the next one.